My name is Emeka Patrick Chukuka. I'm presenting this um, presentation for this research fellowship program, Analysis of Transcriptomics Profile of uh, SARS-CoV-2 Infected Cell Lines to Understand the Mechanism of Action of Repurposed Drugs for COVID-19 Treatment. I did this project uh, with uh, Anita Gansa. Coronavirus disease, as we all know, has infected over 50 million persons and uh, over, recorded over a million deaths. Currently, only Remedesver has been approved for the treatment of this disease with mixed results. A few drugs were computationally repurposed for the treatment of this infection. However, the mechanism of action of some of these drugs are still poorly understood. Roxolutinib is an anti-inflammatory drug that was proposed for the treatment of severe cases and has some clearly defined mechanism of action. However, amlodipine, a calcium channel blocker, is one of the few repurposed drugs for COVID-19 and has shown to reduce viral load and has some yet to be clearly defined mechanism. Using publicly available data sets, on gene response from cell lines treated with the virus of the lutinib and amlodipine, we conducted the differential gene expression and pathway enrichment analysis to elucidate the genes and pathways involved in the mechanism of action of amlodipine. As we all know, roglutinib is an established non-selective inhibitor of the jack start signaling pathway. Here we showed that amlodipine has significant jack start signaling pathway inhibition and modulates other immune-related signaling pathways. Also, we observed that the pathway in which a number of genes were significantly upregulated were involved in innate defense mechanism against these pathogens. We also discovered that amlodipine has some inhibitory effect on viral host interaction that may benefit as a potential antiviral and anti-inflammatory drug as shown ex vivo. We have three grades of COVID-19 infection, the asymptomatic, the non-severe, and the severe grades. About 80% of individuals actually have the asymptomatic and non-severe grades, while 20% have the severe grade. Different molecules, cells, and tissues are involved at different stages or different grades of this infection, as we will see later on. And this may explain why different drugs are useful at different grades and different stages of disease. The process is involved in immunity, cell division, cell death, and uh, tumor formation. The pathway actually communicates information from chemical signals outside the cell to the nucleus and results in activation of some genes. There are three parts to the jack start signaling pathway. We have the Janus kinase, the signal transducer and activator of transcription protein, and the receptors to which the chemical signals, like the growth factor or the cytokines, bind to. We have three major proteins that negatively regulate this signaling pathway, and they are the suppressors of cytokine signaling, the protein inhibitors of activated start, and the protein tyrosine phosphatase. Destruction in this signaling pathway actually leads to a variety of disease such as immune system, cancers, and um, skin conditions. We wanted to compare gene expression profile from cell lines replicates following their treatment with either SARS-CoV-2 or SARS-CoV-2 and the drugs to gain insight into genes and signaling pathways involved in blocking SARS-CoV-2 replication and potentially reducing the viral load equally to gain insight into the genes and signaling pathways involved in modulation of the host response to the infection, and to gain insight into the mechanism of action of amlodipine for COVID-19 treatment. So the data sets, as said earlier, were cell lines. They were transformed long alveolar that were transduced with um, the vector expressing human ACE2, and they were treated with they were mock treated or treated with SARS-CoV-2 or, or treated with SARS-CoV-2 and the drugs. Sequencing was actually performed using the next 500 instrument, a luminar platform, and uh, they were single end library layouts. And gene expressions were obtained actually in RSM scores. So this is our comparisons. 
Our analysis plan was actually to combine these data sets, normalize and filter them, run a PCA, then a differential gene expression analysis. We actually had two data sets that were obtained from two different projects. The first data sets were gene expression in raw data scores from triplicates of the cell line that were treated with either SARS-CoV-2 or SARS-CoV-2 and the drug, and those treated, that were mock treated. And this contained about 21,797 genes. The second data sets were gene expression in raw data scores too, that were treated with SARS-CoV-2 and amlodipine and actually had 23,712 genes. These data sets were merged, cleaned, and duplicates were removed using RStudio packages. So our analysis results revealed after normalization and logarithmic transformation of the data sets, the principal component analysis that was done revealed that uh, PCA1 and PCA2 accounted for most of the variations. Subsequently, differential gene expression and gene ontology pathway analysis were conducted on the server T bio platform for the SARS CoV 2 and the mock treated cell line comparisons, and two pathways that the virus significantly up regulated the number of genes, and the 10 top pathways that a significant number of genes were down regulated were highlighted. Differential gene expression analysis and gene ontology analysis on the comparison between the SARS CoV 2 and the SARS-CoV-2 and the rotulinib revealed four signaling pathways that rotulinib had significant number of down-regulated genes. As the last comparison revealed seven signaling pathways that had significantly down-regulated genes in the presence of amlodipine. And we highlighted the 10 top signaling pathways that had a significant number of up-regulated genes. Rig1, like and Jack Start, and the antigen processing and presenting signaling pathway are highlighted in this presentation for the purpose of discussion. The suppressor of cytokine signaling genes, a set of seven genes common to all the three comparison was shown in bar plots. This is the PCA charts of the samples that were selected. And as we can see, the variations across these genes across these samples are highlighted as such. Now this slide actually shows the volcano plot of the comparison between the SARS-CoV-2 and more treated cell lines and highlighted our pathways of um, interest, the JAK-STAR signaling pathway and the rig one like receptor signaling pathway with a significant difference in both these cell lines that were treated with this drug uh, with this same um, virus and the mock treated uh, cell lines. Highlighted here are the four significantly different pathways in which a number of genes were down regulated due to roxolutinib. I've highlighted in top west blue the part, our pathways of interest here too. Likewise, this is the findings in the comparison between the SARS CoV 2 and the SARS and amlodipine treated cell lines. Here is the comparison between the pathway signaling the rig one like receptor signaling pathway. It, it reveals significant upregulation of genes involved in rig one like signaling pathway that are involved in pro inflammatory response with type 1 interferon and some inflammatory cytokines. We can see the comparison between the SARS versus MOC comparison and the SARS versus SARS and amlodipine comparisons. In this pathway, a number of genes involved in negative regulation of this signaling pathway, the SOC genes, the TCPT genes, and those preventing apoptosis were actually upregulated by SARS, whereas in the presence of amlodipine, they were downregulated. And we can see that on the roxolintinib pathway comparison, some of the, the, the downregulation were not as significant as that in the I'm looking comparisons. The suppressor of cytokine signaling genes is a set of seven genes. And here we highlighted the comparisons between the SARS and the mock treated cell lines and the SARS and the SARS and amlodipine treated cell lines. 
is a bar plot highlighting the changes that were observed and the significant uh, values. Another signaling pathway that we had in some, some down regulated genes and up regulated genes where there was the antigen processing and presentation signaling pathway. Here we observe opposite changes in the SARS versus SARS and amlodipine comparison as compared to the SARS versus SARS and roxolitinib comparison. Significant genes were upregulated where the killer inhibitor receptor genes and the MHC genes in class one and two genes. Here, several host signaling pathways are hijacked by SARS-CoV-2 virus to ensure its survival and replication. This project showed that some of the genes involved in the jack star signaling pathway and the Rebua signaling pathway are significantly upregulated by this virus. It also showed that the virus may also downregulate genes associated with key innate cellular defense mechanism. Amlodipine appears to reverse some of the key changes and may explain why this drug is effective in reducing viral load and improve states of patients with severe disease infected with this virus. The JAP start and the Rigua signaling pathway are necessary in several cellular functions. Take Rigua signaling pathway, which is involved in type 1 interferon response, is necessary to limit the virus from spreading to nearby cells and promote an innate immune response, including inflammatory response and helps in the activation of the adaptive immune system. Riguan is essential in innate immune system for recognizing cells that have been infected with the virus. Infections with SARS-CoV-2 virus results in downstream release of type 1 interferon and pro-inflammatory cytokines, and overexpression of these changes may be responsible for cytokine storms seen in severe cases associated with this infection, as seen in existing findings in literature. Roxolutinib actually downregulates genes involved in the RIG-1 signaling pathway, as seen in this project, and may explain its mechanism of action in its use for severe cases. The virus, in addition to upregulating the JAK and STAT genes, particularly upregulate genes that are involved in negative regulations of this signaling pathway. Suppressors so of sig cytokine signaling, protein inhibitors of activated STAT and protein tyrosine phosphatase are negative regulators of JAK STAT signaling pathway and were shown to be significantly upregulated in this project. Other downstream genes that were significantly upregulated included the MCL1, PIM1, and CMYC. MCL1 directly inhibits apoptosis, and CMYC is an important regulator gene and sometimes acts as a transcription factor involved in cell cycle propagation, cell proliferation, and differentiation. The indirect implication of this is that the virus prevents apoptosis of the infected cell lines and limits the host innate immune activation of the host innate immune mechanism of defense and thereby ensuring its unabated replication and survival. In this project, it was observed that in the presence of amlodipine, the SOCS, PIAS, and PTP were significantly downregulated. Likewise, the CMIC, MCL1, and PIM genes were significantly downregulated. This effect may restore the natural functions of chart star signaling pathway in the presence of COV2 and may explain some of the mechanism of action of amlodipine inhibiting viral replication and survival. Compared with the effect of roxolitinib, though similar patterns are were observed, however, a number of these genes remained unchanged. That's with regards to roxolitinib, the PIA1S and the PIM1 genes. Rosolitinib effects, as seen in this project, acts more on the RIG1 signaling pathway, which may explain its usefulness in the treatment of cytokine storm associated with the infection, in keeping with findings in some studies. Lastly, the effect seen on antigen processing and presentation due to amlodipine is almost opposite to that seen in roxolitinib. With roxolitinib in this project, it was observed that a significant number of genes were downregulated in the process involving the antigen processing and presentation. A group of genes known as the killer cell immunoglobin-like receptor genes were downregulated significantly by roxolitinib. 
while being upregulated significantly by amlodipine. The KIRR genes are involved in the regulation of the killing function of natural killer cells. They do this by modulating how these cells interact with the major histocompatibility cell class one molecules expressed on all nucleated cell types. MHC class one and MHC class two genes were also significantly upregulated by amlodipine. It's important to know that most KIRO genes are inhibitory, meaning that rec the recognition of MHC molecules suppresses the cytotoxicity activities of NK cells, though a limited not few of these genes are stimulatory in nature. The precise nature of these effects due to amlodipine need to be studied further. It appears generally amlodipine enhances the detection of virally infected cells by both innate and adaptive immune systems. The precise effect of these needs to be further clarified. In conclusion, we found that SARS-CoV-2 infection hijacks the JAK-STAT and Reguan signaling pathway by upregulating some genes. Genes upregulated by SARS-CoV-2 in JAK-STAT signaling pathways are involved in negative regulation of this pathway. Amlodipine significantly down regulates genes involved in the negative regulation of the JAK-STAT signaling pathway. And amlodipine may be involved in the modulation of immune response to viral infection due to SARS-CoV-2 by upregulating genes involved in antigen processing and presentation. Some of the limitations observed here was the sample size and the cell lines, which are not typical representations of living hosts. This is the link to the raw data and the reference publications that were used. Thank you for listening.